everyone, this is Eunice Liang, or some students know me as Puan Liang. So, I'm going to be teaching you guys about inertia today. Uh, more specific, this video is about introduction to inertia. So let's not waste much time and let's get down to it. Now, how many of you have tried looking at the fan spinning? Or have you ever observed what happens to the blade of the fan after you switch on or off the fan? Let's start with a little brainstorming. What will happen when you turn the speed to level 5 and switch on the fan? What will happen if you suddenly switch off the fan that is spinning at a level 5? Pause this video and try to write down your answers. You can discuss with your friends if you are watching this together with your friends. Then click playback to continue on with the video. Now, I've actually recorded a particular video of me trying to switch on and off the fan. So I turn the fan to level 5 and then I switch on the fan. As you can see, the fan blade starts to turn slowly and it takes its time before it can actually reach to the maximum level of speed 5. As you notice now, the fan is already spinning at level 5. Then I immediately switch it off and observe the fan again. Does it stop immediately? As you see, it doesn't. So why it doesn't stop immediately? Have you ever wondered why? So I'm going to fast forward this particular video as the rest of the video is just to see the fan's blade spinning. Now, let's get back to our discussion earlier on. Did the video agree with your initial answer? Or is it different? Explain your answer and what you have saw. Now, we're going to go to the next particular uh, activity. Imagine that you are sitting on a limitless ice ring. What will happen to you after 5 or 10 seconds? Suddenly, your friend push you by surprise. What will happen to you then after 5 and 10 seconds? Now, limitless ice ring means that there is no friction between you and the ice ring or minimum friction. So after 5 to 10 seconds sitting down on the ice ring, Will you move or will you sit at the same place? Why? If a friend suddenly push you by surprise, what will happen to you? After 5 seconds? After 10 seconds? Now, let's go to the simulation to try. I'll put the simulation link together at the, uh, at the description so that you guys can actually go and have a look and play around with the simulations. So this simulation I'm using is from Fab Interactive Simulations. This is one of the most favorite simulations that I always use in my classes. Now while waiting for it to run. Now this simulation is forces and motion basics under the category of friction. So what happens here is that at this right corner here, I'm going to check on the forces where I'll, it will show the forces that is being applied. Some of the forces means the total forces. Then I'm going to click on the value so that I can see the value of each characteristic or of each physical quantity available. I'm going to click on mass all right, so that uh, we can see the mass. But then again, we don't need to look at the mass for this particular uh, simulation this round. I'm going to click on speed so that I have a speedometer to show me the speed of the girl moving. And this particular slider controls the friction of this particular uh, runway and the object that's being placed on top. So I'm going to move the slider to none. And as you can see, the track now becomes ice freeze cold. This reason is because uh, it's similar to no friction because ice means that the friction uh, value is very, very small. So then what happens here is at this bottom part, under the applied force, as you can see, there's two types of arrow. This arrow all right, the fast forward arrow actually increase the applied force by 50 to 100, 150, 200 newtons, so on and so forth. The single arrow here actually increases the uh, force by 1 newton, 2 newton, 3 newton, so on and so forth. Or you can make sudden changes by sliding this particular slider, which I'm going to be doing for this simulation. So over here, because I mentioned what will happen to the girl, I'm going to place this girl and put her on top. Now, I'm going to be, uh, before I 
applied force onto the girl. Observe what happens to the girl. The girl is just sitting there on the ice rink. She doesn't move at all. Alright, now I'm going to suddenly apply force by pushing this slider to 500 Newton and this particular uh, person, okay, person in brackets, so will apply a force onto the girl suddenly, depends on how long I press on this slider. So I'm going to slide it to 500 Newton for 2 seconds. 1, 2, and I let go. So this actually shows that the girl is being suddenly pushed and she sets in motion. So one, two, three, four, five. After five seconds, look, the girl is still in motion and the speed doesn't drop at all. Let's count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The girl is still continue on with the same motion with the same speed. Okay, so does this agree with what you actually wrote just now? Let's go to the next slide. Now, what happens to the girl when placed on the non-friction track? She remains static. What happens to the girl after she's suddenly being pushed? She is forced to be in motion. Then, what happens to the girl's motion after 5 and 10 seconds? She continues in the motion with constant velocity. What are the two statements that you can predict? So my prediction is, if the girl remains at rest, she will continue to be at rest. If the girl is already in motion, she continues to move with a constant speed in a straight line. What about your answer? Now, this is actually inertia. When an object remains at rest, it will have a tendency to remain at rest. If it's actually moving, it will continue on moving. Before I actually go to the definition of inertia, let's talk about mass. Now, mass is the amount of particle that is in a body or an object. When we have a certain amount of particles, it will have a corresponding mass value. But one thing that we need to know Every single object has a natural tendency to remain at rest or it will continue to go on its motion if there's nothing stopping it. When you try to change its motion or position, the particle will resist the change. That is the reason why if it is at rest, the object doesn't want to move. If it is moving, it doesn't want to stop. So that is actually what we meant by inertia. Now, inertia's definition is the tendency of an object to remain at rest, or if it's moving, it will continue to move in motion in a straight line at uniform velocity. Now, in the BM version, you can see at the bottom down there. Now, Newton's first law of motion is always similar to the inertia. Newton's first law of motion states an object will remain at rest or move at uniform velocity unless acted upon by an external force. Please note one thing. Newton's first law might sound like inertia but it is not equal because Newton's first law of motion is the object uh, obeying the law. The object will remain at rest if there is an external force acting on it. But if you look back at inertia's definition, it's the tendency of an object to remain at rest. Or when it's moving, it continues on in the motion in a straight line at uniform velocity. Inertia is the tendency. But for Newton's first law, the object will remain at rest or move at uniform velocity unless it is acted upon by an external force. So that's the difference between inertia and Newton's first law. It is almost seems like similar, but remember, inertia is the tendency of the object. When Newton's first law is every single object needs to obey this particular law of motion. Remember one particular thing though, inertia is not a physical quantity. If it's not a physical quantity, then what is it? Why is it not a physical quantity?
Can you guess the answer? This actually tests on your previous knowledge. Now, why inertia is not a physical quantity? This is because physical quantity defines as the quantity that can be measured and has unit. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist its motion. So, inertia cannot be a physical quantity because you can't measure the value of inertia. We can only see the effect of inertia. So this is all that I want to explain for today. I hope that you guys actually understand the introduction of inertia, mass, and also Newton's first law. Join me in the next lesson where we will go deeper into how does mass relate with inertia and how is inertia being applied in the daily lives. So that's all from me today. This is Bon Leong again or Eunice Leong. Till the next video, bye everyone!